My wife refused me all year. Found out she cheated and got an STD. So here's a little background. My wife, 31 female, and I have been married for three years and have been together for five years. The last two years have been very difficult for her and me as she completed a master's degree in a highly competitive program. The program's last year was last year, and it really pushed her. We didn't spend much time in the bedroom at those period since she was either studying or in class. She completed her master's degree in June of last year. I expected things to start up in the bedroom when it was finished, but they haven't. She still turned me down all the time, despite the fact that she was stressed about finding work. It's gotten to the point where the last time we had sex was in April of this year. Every time I attempted to initiate, go on a date night or be romantic, she was too wearied. Respond. I even told her I'd settle for foul words every now and then, but she didn't want to do that either. I proposed that we go to therapy. She said that she would look for a counselor she loved. I sat there waiting. I inquired once more. She referred to me as self-centered. I finally gave up. I went insane for the first several months, and then I decided to just concentrate on myself, start working out, and continue doing my own thing. We had a really nice relationship before the absence of sex, but now it's more like roommates than husband slash wife. Let's go back to this past weekend. We watched the Super Bowl with another couple who are dear friends of ours. We met and began hanging out with a random group of folks who were also watching the game when we were at the sports bar. A really lovely lady from that group kept ending up next to me, making small chat with me and staring at me in a clearly flirtatious manner. I kept it tidy while maintaining the banter. When the girl left to the restroom, my wife brought me over and said something to the effect of, in front of our couple's friends, that girl is obviously interested in you. I don't want you to speak to her. Something about the way she said it to me sparked something in me, and I simply said, I'm just glad to have your attention, sweetheart. It's been a while. It's been over a year. She seemed perplexed. Then I became enraged. Then he became angry. Our companions just turned around and resumed watching the game. The second girl then returned and introduced herself to my wife. My wife went away, and our friend's wife followed her. We quickly exited the pub and shared an Uber back with the other couple. We got into an argument, which we seldom do, over her lack of enthusiasm in going to therapy, and she told me she felt I was selfish and uncaring. We haven't spoken much since then. I don't want to terminate my marriage, but I don't see her making any concessions. Before I file for divorce, I'd want to know if there is anything we can do to rescue the situation. Update 1. On the Saturday after my first article, I attempted to chat to her about what I thought was lacking in our relationship. This did not go as planned. The next Saturday, I went out and got an apartment with a lease that began on March 1st. I returned home and informed her that I would be leaving. I said that I had no idea what was going on with her, and that since she refused to do something about it, I desired a divorce. I loved her, but I couldn't continue to live as a prisoner. She became very silent and then began weeping, telling me that I was harsh and selfish, that my obsession with Zex was the problem, and that I should get treatment for it again. I was hoping she'd say anything more, but she didn't, so I simply began packing a few things for work. She inquired where I was going, I told her I was going to stay with my parents for a few weeks until my lease began. When I informed her I was going to stay with my parents, she became quite silent and asked whether I had notified my parents yet. Sirens began to sound in my brain right away. I said that I had not done so, this was a lie. Then she became silent for about five minutes, and just as I was ready to go out the door, she implored me not to. She wanted to converse. Then she said something that I didn't want to hear. Last year, she cheated on me with a boy in her class. I also acquired an STD. Nothing deadly, but not the type that can be gotten rid of. She said that occurred just once, but I'm certain that is not the case. I felt completely numb. A female acquaintance informed me that wife infidelity was a possibility, but I didn't trust her. I remained silent as my wife spoke. Mostly because my thoughts was racing, but also because I didn't know what to say. I realized now that I had spoken all I had to say in the preceding year, and now I had nothing. After she finished speaking, I just said, okay. I felt completely numb, and I left the home with her in it to go to my parents' place, which was approximately two hours away. I assured her I'd return, but I haven't seen her or been to the home since. When I arrived to my parents' place, I told them everything. They apologized and said they could sense something was wrong for a few months. I had intended to return to the home, 
but my mother advised me not to do so if I was going through with the divorce. So my mom and father went to get me a few personal goods, I left everything else. I also phoned a lawyer and instructed him to contact the wife in order to begin the divorce proceedings. Wife has contacted me on my mobile phone and at work many times, and she has even emailed me, but I have not read anything. She also had one of her friends contact me and ask me to please speak to my wife and apologize, but as soon as I learned it was a friend of hers, I hung up. In April, I'll have two weeks off and intend to visit Vegas with a friend. My parents and friends have been really encouraging, and I truly feel better than I have in a long time. I never saw myself being divorced, and I felt like a failure that first week because I knew my marriage was gone. But my father said something to me that I have repeated to myself several times. Someone else's wrongdoing makes them the failure. Not you, sir. This weekend, I spent time with a co-worker with whom I've always gotten along. She noticed I was missing my ring at work last week and inquired as to what had occurred. My wife and I were divorcing, so I informed her. She hugged me in the workplace, and it felt like the finest thing in the world. This weekend after work, we went out for a few beers, chilled out, and had a good time before returning to my apartment. Obviously, I'm not ready for or desire a relationship, but it felt so amazing to be in a bed with a lady who was so comfortable and welcoming. I was extremely relaxed. I know the divorce will be difficult, but even with all that has transpired this weekend, I believe it will be worthwhile. Update 2. This is the last update for those who messaged me and wanted to know how the divorce was progressing. I'll address all of your queries here. Have I spoken to or seen my wife since I left the house? I haven't spoken to or seen soon-to-be ex, STBX, since I moved out. She tried phoning me for a few weeks, but I had stopped answering any strange calls. She left me two, irk, weepy messages, but they stopped shortly after the attorneys got involved. Is the divorce going well? I provided the spousal support amount he recommended in a flat payment via my lawyer. She could have everything she wanted in the home. I attempted to keep the talk as short as feasible and as straightforward as possible. I discovered out around a month or so after I started that she had been telling her friends that I had been emotionally abusive to her. That I continued putting pressure on her to do sexual things she didn't want to do. That I was opposed to her earning a graduate degree. Of course, all of this is a lie, and I nearly phoned her back to urge her to cease her bull. This is the only time I can recall feeling enraged. But happily, my parents and friends just encouraged me to let the lawyer handle it, not to contact her and not to lose my cool for even a single second until the divorce was finalized. I also found out via common acquaintances that she has a dating profile on a dating app and is dating. Lawyer says it's a good thing, and I tend to agree. There is a lot of information that attorneys inquire about. It's strange having someone you hardly know ask you extremely precise questions about your sex life, money, and other highly intimate matters. Overall, this stage of the process has been the most difficult for me and has left me exhausted. On the good side, the lawyer believes everything will be completed within a few weeks, allowing me to finally be free. Did I inform my pals that she had cheated? Yes. And she was diagnosed with STI. And we hadn't tasted Zex in over a year. I had to explain why I had simply gotten up and departed. I was completely honest. I'm not going to be ashamed of her. How much does divorce cost? I can't tell for sure. A one-time buyout should cost between $100,000 and $150,000. Did she give me STI? No. I got myself examined once shortly after she informed me and again after then, and I'm okay. Is it likely that I will remarry? A resounding no. For me, the previous three years have been emotionally taxing. And suffocating. Every marital cliché I'd heard before getting married has come true. My wife deserved it. In addition, she did not hold herself responsible in the marriage. She continuously reminded me of my obligations and her rights. She blamed me for everything horrible that occurred to us, and she insisted on her emotions becoming my facts. Worse, she would easily transfer her errors and shame onto me and force me to bear them instead of dealing with them as an adult, and I notice it wherever I look. I was taught to think that husband and wife were partners in everything. Each other's responsibility, but when I look around, all I see is the message that women are overburdened and that males are the issue. That women do not need males. That if a woman is dissatisfied in her marriage, it is the responsibility of the guy. And maybe she can do better. I see it in the marriages of several of my friends. 
my friends, wives constantly show disdain for their husbands, and I felt the same way about STBX. My mother once told me that women nowadays compete more than they collaborate, or it's something along those lines, and I can see it 100% of the time when I look at my friends and their marriages, as well as mine. Most of my friends have children and feel imprisoned. I understand now that I was already really happy before I met my wife. I didn't have a single desire. My company was doing well, and I was having a good time. I married because I felt it would improve my life and make me happy. That we would merge the greatest elements of our life for our mutual benefit, so that our future children would have the security of two committed and amazing parents. But now I see that after we married, I essentially started financing her life. She expected me to do what she wanted and to let her do what she wanted. She benefited from a better life, whereas all I received were responsibilities. That's the most truthful way I can describe it. According to the Bible, it is preferable for a man to live alone on a roof corner than in a home with a quarrelsome lady. I concur. I get nothing from being married. I don't think I'll ever get married again. Do I yearn for her? No. For me, closeness and trust are essential components of attachment, common, I think and comfort. I didn't have either of them with her. I had the opposite. I was feeling inadequate. She continued moving like though I was continually attempting to strike a target. I never felt that way in my life until she came into my life. And a part of me knew she liked it that way. So that the emphasis would be on me rather than on her. That isn't love. That is awful. So, no, I'm not missing her. Now, I feel like a better guy. Is it true that I'm still dating a co-worker? We haven't shared a bed in a few weeks but we continue to hang out, and I like it. I'd say we're pals.